If you want to learn about Coker College and meet the longest serving college president in South Carolina, stay tuned. Carolina People's bringing it to you. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in Hartsville, South Carolina. We're on the campus of Coker College, and we're visiting with its provost and dean of faculty, Dr. Ron Carter. Dr. Carter, thanks so much for being with Good us this morning. Good morning, Greg. I'm delighted to be here. It's a great treat. All week we've been uh, here on the Coker College campus, both Monday and Tuesday. We were focused on the South Carolina Governor's School yes. for Science and Math today with yourself, the provost, and of course, uh, really excited about the next guest who has received an honorary degree. That's Dr. Coker Lawrence College. Richardson. That's right. President of Morris College. We're really excited about Dr. Richardson coming in. And then later in the week, we've got a real focus here on Hartsville, but there was no better place to be if you're going to be in the town in the city of Hartsville than to be on the Coker College campus, and particularly since you all have done such an amazing partnership with the South Carolina Governor's School. Yes. That, that has been a, uh, a spectacular presence, and hearing Dr. Brockman talk about all that interact, all the interaction that occurs with the, with, with the Coker College campus and how you all support them so much. Tell the viewers real quick about yourself. Are you a PD area native, Dr. Carter? No, I was born in High Point, North Carolina, so I am from the Tar Heels. Yes. I grew up there, attended the local high school. From North Carolina, I moved to Georgia, where I attended Morehouse College. And from Morehouse College, I studied in Istanbul, Turkey, and from Istanbul, Turkey, to Boston University, where I received my master's and Ph.D. In, in, that was principally in? Um, in religion, uh, philosophical theology for my graduate studies. Okay. Yes. Huh. And so you've been uh, at Coker for how long? I've enjoyed six years here at Coker College. I came... Uh, here from the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa. I was a dean there for six years. Is that you were in uh, South Africa for six years? Well, I lived in South Africa for 10 years. I worked at Witts University for uh, about eight of the uh, 10 years. The other two years I spent time working in health development initiatives in the rural areas of the Eastern Transvaal, as right? well as in the Northern Transvaal. That's amazing. Well, I'm sorry today's focused on Coker <laughs> College because we can surely uh, get a heck. I mean, uh, with Carolina people as the focus, and surely you're both a, a Carolinian, a North Carolinian by birth, and now uh, trickulated here to, to South Carolina, uh, to the, the the Palmetto State, what yes. would oftentimes referred to as the, the sand lappers. Now, I, I think we've been here long enough. Uh, to be a sand lapper. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've I got to wonder at times. What about uh, uh, the particular, any particulars here at Coker that encourage you to leave uh, South Africa to come, come back to the Carolinas and, and end up here in Hartsville? Yes, uh, and let me make a connection with my South African experience. Uh, my first trip to uh, South Carolina was to visit Coker College with the national student leaders who were involved in the overthrow of the apartheid government. Mm. Coker College had been recommended by an American for these students to come and to see how a southern school operated, had integrated during the early 60s. The students traveled from Morehouse College to Princeton University. They rated Coker College as number one in their visit. And okay. today, even when I talk with them, they are still captivated about their experiences here. During that time, I had the opportunity to meet with the then president, uh, Dr. Jim Daniels, and I became engaged with the uh, community. And when an invitation was extended to me to consider the uh, position as provost, I was delighted to accept it. It's wonderful. That is, a, that is an amazing connection. Yes. And to know that those students or the, the students who came over are still talk. And when you mentioned Coker, the excitement, if they visited Princeton, I'm sure uh, which is a, is a small campus, albeit in, in, a, in, a, in a large sphere, yes. it, uh, that must be a great feeling knowing that you're now here. I'm it sure. is indeed. Speaking of Coker, how many students are here on campus? This year we had uh, record enrollment. We have a total student population of 10,095 students. On campus we house approximately 380. If we look at the day students uh, and the resident students, we have approximately 413 students. 
The bulk of our students are now in the evening program. I'm very pleased that we've enrolled over 600 students mm. in our evening program. Uh, the program is hand in glove of the academy here. Is that right? Yes. You said 600. Yes. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That is amazing. Could, and, and the classes uh, are the classes much different between the the day students and the night students. No, not in terms of quality. In terms of the way we schedule uh, the classes, uh, the students in the evening program are in class for an hour and a half, whereas our day students are in the traditional class uh, period of 45 to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. But the quality remains the same. Mm -hmm. It is a seamless program. And we do have both day and evening students going back and forth between the programs. Speaking of that quality, can we talk a little bit about something that's very dear to you, which is your faculty? Can you tell the viewers a little bit about uh, your yes, faculty? Yes, I am very proud of the Coker faculty. We have 54 full-time faculty members, all of whom, except for six, uh, have their terminal degrees. And mm -hmm. I hope that by this time next year, four of the six will have the uh, terminal degrees in hand. They are well-traveled. Uh, highly articulate in their professions. They are on the cutting edge of research and pedagogy. They have a strong commitment to the education of the entire student. Uh, I have had the opportunity to work with faculty around the world, mm -hmm. and I can say that the faculty here uh, can walk head and shoulder with any other faculty member I've met, uh, whether in South Africa or England or in Boston. That's wonderful. I'm sure you're, 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 the faculty here love not only to know that, you're, uh, that you say that, but that you're capable of saying that. Yes, I'm capable of saying that, and I'm very jealous of the faculty here. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. A, a totally opposite side, to some degree, would be the student perspective. As the dean of faculty and as provost, uh, surely there's a, a good bit of interaction with students, probably not as much with the faculty, but... Do you, from your, do you have a perspective of student life here, here on the Coker College campus, both for the day and even for the evening students? A very vibrant uh, student life. One of the cardinal virtues for the faculty is a personal relationship with students. Our faculty will go so far as to list their home telephone numbers on their syllabi so that exactly. the students feel encouraged to call them at home. Mm -hmm. I say that to say that the faculty are involved in the student life of students, and uh, you will see faculty participating with them at basketball games or at the uh, latest fashion show, whatever activity that has been planned, uh, it's a combination of both faculty and student life, so it is a very vibrant community. Mm -hmm. We have a number of student organizations, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from uh, the Christian Alliance to the Social Work Student Organization. Uh, if a student doesn't like what we offer, a student has the right to form an organization. So it's a very strong program. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. And that, if a student doesn't like what's offered, they really there's a true opportunity there to yes. form something new. Yes. That's wonderful. Get one, two, three other students, and uh, there's a new organization on campus. There's been good support from the governing body uh, of the university to enable that. How's the is, is how's the the university governed? Well, the college uh, is uh, a shared governance. We, belong, uh, we strongly believe that the academy must be a collegial uh, environment. So we uh, have faculty on the Board of Trustees as voting members, a student on the Board of Trustees as a voting member. The budget is written by both administration and faculty. There is not a committee of governance on this campus that does not include uh, faculty. So the key word for us is shared governance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shared governance here on the college campus. Any expansion currently going on at Coker, Dr. Yes, Carter? we are looking forward to putting up the state-of-the-arts information technology library. Uh, center, uh, I hope within the next uh, two years mm -hmm. it will be named after Charles W. and Joan S. Coker. Mm. That uh, facility will be the hub for academic activity and will also be the portal of uh, worldwide knowledge. We also hope to uh, expand uh, to the old Bali hospital facility and uh, to build uh, field houses there and perhaps a uh, center for meetings. So we're looking forward to an expansion. 
You also have a, a small capital campaign underway. That's uh, correct. Going on uh, to help that, fund some expansion. That campaign is called the uh, Gateway to the 21st Century mm -hmm. uh, campaign. Uh, Twenty, uh, I think it's $22.6 million. Mm. Uh, it is moving along very well. Right. And as I said, the uh, centerpiece of that campaign will be the Library Information Technology Center. But we look forward to a new campus plan, to uh, uh, expanding uh, our facilities, refurbishing facilities. We we're excited about the campaign. I'm sure. And Coker, uh, the campaign will help expand the opportunities for Coker to continue to train uh, uh, new leaders, not only here in South Carolinas, uh, and here in South Carolina, but throughout the Carolinas and yes. throughout the country. Yes, really throughout the world now. As you talk about uh, absolutely a good in, in, the the international connection, not only that it helped bring you to Coker, but surely there's a, a much more internationally known recognition of Coker now. Yes, I'm very pleased with that. I'm sure. What about uh, uh, the ability of e uh, the education to tie into economic development here? Surely in the Hartsville community, uh, uh, the, the community must <laughs> thoroughly embrace uh, the campus and all it's done to help grow its economic strength or its... Yes, and I think uh, the important point there, we have an obligation to prepare students to move assertively into the economy. And that means uh, particularly that they have to be articulate when it comes to uh, information technology. Mm -hmm. They must understand how the economy works and be active uh, citizens. I think in any community that lacks an educated uh, group of people, there will always be the trouble, the problem yeah. of growing the economy. So we are pleased to work hand in glove with uh, the companies here with the uh, industry to make sure that we are providing uh, students uh, who can become productive employees. We've got to wrap it up, but I was wondering one last thing, if there was any accomplishment in particular over the past year as provost that you're most proud? Yes, uh, it is a partnership between Coker College and the Department of Social Services Foster Care, a partnership with nine high schools uh, in the area and a uh, partnership with uh, S. Graham and Associate, and we call it Communities Vision of Community Education in South Carolina. And I think it will become a model partnership for high institutions working in community. That's wonderful. Dr. Ron Carter, Dean of Faculty, Provost here at Coker College, six years here in Hartsville, an amazing international connection bringing him here. Dr. Carter, thanks again so much for Thank being with great. us this morning. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're in Hartsville, South Carolina on the campus of Coker College. We're focused on Coker today, and we're particularly honored to have a, a former a Hartsville native who's a recipient of uh, an honorary degree from Coker College, Dr. Lund C. Richardson. Dr. Richardson's not only a recipient of an honorary degree from Coker, but is also the president of Morris College, located in Sumter. He's received honorary degrees from Benedict College and his own Morris College, and was named outstanding alumnus from both Benedict and the Teachers College of Columbia University. We're honored to have him with us this morning. Thanks again so much for being here. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Very definitely. What year did you leave Hartsville, Dr. Richardson? I left Hartsville in 1945 Ooh, to go so, to college. Uh, oh, I was about to say about the year you were born, but uh, you were already <laughs> uh, at a high school age uh, to, to go to college. Yes, I left to go to Benedict College in Columbia. I understand that you have the distinction of being the longest serving president in the state of South Carolina, or is it the longest serving continuously president in the state of South Carolina? Yes, I do have that honor. I'm now in my 29th year Your 29th? as president of Morris College. Is that right? I am the longest current serving president in the state. That's amazing. That's amazing. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about Morris College? Morris College is a small, uh, comprehensive college founded in 1908 by the Baptist Educational and Missionary Convention of South Carolina. 
It's the co-educational institution offering some 21 degrees, including training in teacher education and our ROTC program, and of course many other enrichment programs for our students. Mm -hmm. We have a student population of about 1,049 this year. Mm. They come from every county in South Carolina, uh, in addition to about 21 other states, the District of Columbia, and two or three foreign countries. Is that right? That's amazing. Every county in South Carolina, all 46 counties. That's right. That's spectacular. Well, that, <clears throat> what would be the percentage of students from South Carolina at Morris? Uh, 80 to 85 percent of our students are from South Carolina mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. And from 15 to 20 percent of our students come from other states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your career prior to uh, becoming president at, at Morris? Did you, were you active uh, at Morris prior to uh, 29 years ago? Had you been on the faculty? Or? No, not at all. You came straight in I as president. Straight in as president. That's amazing. I had served as a high school principal. I had served as a dean of men at Denmark Technical College. Mm. And of course, one year as principal at Wilson High School in Florence, South Is Carolina. That right. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to Benedict and served in various capacities. From there to Voorhees College in Denmark for one year. Mm. And then I was invited to become the president of Morris College. And of course, by this time, it was uh, June 1974. Mm -hmm. And I began my tenure July the 1st. 1974. July the 1st, right? That's the right. Center of the year. Yes. What about, uh, obviously, the, the you said the college founding goes back to 1908. Who were some of the original founders? The college was really founded by the convention. Uh, no particular individual gets credit uh, for establishing the college. It was established by the convention. The convention appointed a committee mm -hmm. to study the feasibility of founding a college for young black men and women. And uh, the committee came back with a favorable report in around 1906. And by 1908, the college was founded. And of course, the leaders were the officers of the Baptist State Convention at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many changes have happened during your tenure over the last 29 years at Morris. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about your first priority when you arrived and, uh, and, and began? My June? very first priority was to get the school accredited mm -hmm. by the Regional Accrediting Agency, which is the Commission on Colleges of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. We made that achievement in five years. And of course, along the way, we uh, cleared the school of existing debts we renovated buildings and built new buildings. We upgraded the faculty. And of course, we increased the student uh, enrollment. And we added some 15 new majors mm. uh, during that time. I was really excited to hear earlier this morning one of your uh, alums uh, who works at Fox 43 now in Myrtle Beach, Nakisha Graham, was riding up with us. She was telling uh, the producer and myself that. When, when you arrived at, at the college, the, the school was in serious financial troubles as well, and that within a year or a couple of years, you were able to, to turn it uh, into a positive cash flow position. Yes, in a year and a half. A year and a half yes. to go from financial turmoil really into, and I'm sure it was still at a point where you wanted to grow it and grow it That's every right. year. <clears throat> That's right, and we were successful because so many people or supported the institution financially. When you say the Baptist Educational and Missionary Convention, you're talking about at least 450,000 people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, through their churches mm. and other organizations. Golly. Then the Morris College Alumni Association has been very effective in fundraising. Mm -hmm. And once we became accredited, we were granted membership in the United Negro College Fund. And the United Negro College Fund has been a great a blessing to the institution since we became members in 1982. Okay. Uh, 
in terms of funding, mm -hmm. uh, scholarships, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, technological development, faculty grants, mm -hmm. monies for buildings. Uh, it has been a great thing to be a member of the United Negro College Fund, along with our other fundraising. Yes. And once we became accredited, then it became easier to get monies from foundations and corporations and from philanthropists. Mm -hmm. How exactly does that work? Could you just tell the viewers real quick about the United Negro College Fund, exactly how that works, uh, the, how they get funds to distribute to The college. United Negro College Fund was founded in 1944. It is a combination of 39 uh, predominantly private black institutions that are accredited. You must be accredited. Mm -hmm. Then the fund staff spends its time raising monies from foundations, corporations, big businesses, and philanthropists. Mm -hmm. And they distribute this money to the 39 member institutions. Mm -hmm. And in addition to those monies, they constantly get special grants from IBM, Microsoft, the Lilly Foundation, mm -hmm. and they give that money to you for special purposes, such as Morris College, we've been able to do great things with our technological development mm -hmm. and with uh, endowing uh, scholarships for students and various other activities at the college. Well, Morris has clearly reached great heights during your tenure. Are there any big projects underway uh, at the institution that you're you're particularly the number active. one project now that we have built many buildings. We have a very strong faculty, a very strong academic program. We are well on our way in technological development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, our biggest project right now is to increase the endowment of the institution. Mm. Because, you know, strong institutions usually have big endowments. Mm -hmm. And that has moved to the front of the list right now, the top of the list, uh, increasing our endowment. There are some other things, but that's the main thing now. And the primary vehicle to increase your endowment is just really getting out and that's beating right. the streets and, and letting folks know about that's both right. how important Morris is, that not is only correct. to the state of South Carolina, but uh, to the entire yes. nation. The impact, you said the UNCF has a has been a, uh, primarily deals with, was it 34? 39. 39. Private, four year accredited right. black institutions. Right. And so there are quite a few other black institutions yes. that are not accredited or not recipients that's of right. United Negro College Fund uh, 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 that's right. monies. Well, that's very interesting. I was not aware of that. That's always, of course, We've seen some spectacular television advertisements, print or billboard advertisements, right. a real desire to get out and, and knowing who are the potential recipients. To know that Morris is one of those 39 is a great honor for South Carolina. Are there any other schools in South yes, Carolina? Yes, I that, was about to mention the yes. other schools, and I want to preface that by saying that fundraising for the United Negro College Fund is very important in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. The member institutions are uh, Benedict College, mm -hmm. Morris College, Claflin University and Voorhees College. Mm -hmm. All four of these institutions are members of the United Negro College Fund. Mm -hmm. And the same kinds of benefits that I mentioned for Morris College uh, accrue to those institutions also in this state. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us real quick or tell the viewers about the most significant change that's happened over your, God, there's so many. I know that's difficult to do over your 29-year tenure at Morris. The student enrollment has uh, gone from 250 students at my beginning to now well over 1,000 students. That's one of the big changes that we have seen at Morris College. The school has become attractive to large numbers of students. Uh, the faculty at Morris College has undergone a great change for the better, for strength. And then, of course, Morris College has uh, revamped its educational program. I think I mentioned the fact that we instituted about 15 new majors, mm. uh, plus an Army ROTC program. Mm. Uh, then, of course, we are very excited now that uh, our technological development has uh, revolutionized the campus in terms of teaching techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, every student has uh, access to the computer now and to internet. Mm -hmm. 
our library is second to none. And of course, every building on campus is wired uh, for our computer use and are connected to the internet. Uh, we are very excited. And of course, we intend to continue that development in the future. Very definitely. Dr. Lund C. Richardson, the longest serving college president in the state of South Carolina, 29 years at the helm of Morris College, Hartsville native, honorary degree from Coker College, as well as many other colleges. Distinguished honor for us to have Dr. Lundsey Richardson with us today on Carolina People. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank Definitely. you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People.